but yeah, I haven't done many videos recently. I was a bit sick, a bit distracted with other family activities. And now I will be covering the Friday close, which I didn't get to do last week. And I'm going to be splitting, chopping my videos into smaller videos, actually. So instead of covering everything in one big video, I'm just going to be making smaller ones. Um, okay, this one with this little special introduction might not be the smallest one, but, you know, markets and banks together, uh, gold, silver and the miners together, uh, commodities other than gold and silver, so oil, uranium, gas, copper, I'll put those together. And then interest rates in the dollar, that's how I was thinking of doing it. So this will be my first one, just covering the markets and the banks. So really Friday, you know, the low and the, and the high of day weren't that, um, you know, wide in terms of difference. So it wasn't the, the, the largest trading day, if, you, if I can say that. Close near low of day, you know, well off the highs. But for me, that's a neutral trading day. It's not really bullish or bearish. We're in the middle of the channel. You know, this channel we're, we're trading at here between 433 and let's call it 460, although it's not even 459 really. Uh, so middle of the range, you know, not really bullish or bearish candle for the S&P. I'm still biased to the downside. I still think we're going to we're gonna come down, make this right shoulder and flush. I really do think that I've said that before the, the, the drop here took place. And I think it's going to play out. I think it moved up a little higher than I expected. But I'm not unbelievably shocked because the whole market's moved up way more than I expected. And, um, you know, whether it's AI news or some good news, I think it was some bad news, which meant, oh, rates aren't going to go up. You know, these little games take place. But I think a lot of people are realizing now that this economy is not great. I don't care about soft landing, no landing. Some people think no landing. It's not great. And um, it's it, there's a delay, you know, and the interest rates are not going to stop. They're going to stay where they are or go higher. I think they're going to go higher again this year another 25 base, basis points at least. And I think that'll create the right shoulder in flushes. So S&P, you know, neutral given Friday's close, but I still think we're going to lean to the downside. NASDAQ, exact same candle. By the way, I think NVIDIA was red despite the NASDAQ being green. So NVIDIA may, um, may have made its peak. I hope so. I'm still short. And, you know, you've got stocks like Apple. I mean, they regained. I'm not going to look at those stocks right now. But, you know, a lot of the big names, Magnificent Sevens, they were looking very weak. And then they just crawled back to stay a little bit positive. I think Tesla is also one of them. But I think they're very toppy. And once they flush, you know, it's basically the Magnificent Seven that led us all the way up. Once they get weak and they look like they've topped, when they start to flush, uh, it won't take much for the market to flush down with us. So Nasdaq, same as the s and I still think we're going to create this right shoulder and go down. Really, I would change my mind if I see a close below above 380, then you may start to make a new high, which is absolutely absurd. But I still reckon we're going to make this right shoulder and flush. Dow Jones, yeah, not the weakest candle either. But look, I still think the market is going to go down and it won't take much for the Dow Jones to close just below 34,000, let's say 200, especially 34,400. Imagine that. Sorry, 34,000. A close below 34,000, it's done. It'll, you know, it'll touch here, bounce a little bit back to 34,000 and then down it goes. So for me, the Dow Jones uh, will not be able to withstand the flush in the S&P and the NASDAQ. The Russell, look how that's the weakest one, right? Just as the banks and the Russell were the weakest on the way down a few months ago, it's starting to resume this trend. And, you know, we may have a small bounce one or two days. I don't even think we're really going to get that. Bam, below 182, a close below 180, and we are toast. And now to look at the banks that go with the Russell. Okay, the XLF, not so much. It's holding sideways. I think that'll come back down here. 33.5, XLF. As soon as the markets go low with the Russell, down we go. But this is what I'm really watching, KBE and KRE. We're starting to see more reports of weak banks. And it just takes one or two reports like that, and the whole thing just shifts and... It's a cascade, everyone looking for the same exits. For me, KBE, look, it just about did it, right? It tagged the, the horizontal perfectly, close to high of day, pretty strong stuff, up up 1%. But other than that, um, one or two bad days, and we close below, in this case, we close below 37.50, especially 37 when we close the gap. But, you know, down we go to the second lowest level before the absolute bear market low. KRE, exact same thing. You know, just did enough to stay in the game. But I'm sorry, S&P, Nasdaq, whether it's Apple or NVIDIA or 
Tesla or whatever, another one of the big boys, um, or maybe just a medium boy. Maybe it's, it's I don't know, just a random stock, IBM, net, you know, or it's macro data, as always, that comes out and just pushes us down just by one day. This whole thing just can cascade down. So KBE, KRE are the weakest specific ETFs, I think, that could take down the market, especially the Russell. Otherwise, look for one of the big boys to take down, uh, you know, the S&P or the Nasdaq. Otherwise, look for macro data to just absolutely ruin it. Maybe it's good news. You know, maybe some good news comes out. Oh, no, that means rates will stay up. Bam, market goes down and all the technicals are ruined. So for me, markets and banks, I mean, the banks are weak, absolutely weak. Markets, they're sort of, you know, let's just look at the Nasdaq. Middle of the range, okay, but I still favor a move to the downside. Russell, though, for me, it's the Russell. The Russell and the banks, I'm watching that as I used to do very often. And, and I'm still watching the NASDAQ with specific stocks like NVIDIA. So, and of course, the macro data. Right, that'll do for the banks and the markets. I'm still biased to the downside. As you can see, I will cover the other um, sectors in my other videos.